In this video I will show you how you can remove the glove box on a Volkswagen Polo 9N or Mark IV. This is the glove box and you might want to remove the glove box if you want to replace the fan for the AC or the motor that controls the, the flap or the recirculator flap or if you want to replace the resistor that controls the speed of the AC fan. First step is to remove this tray. This is a convenience soft rubber tray and that's the part number. If you need to replace this, you don't really need that part, but it's a bit convenient to have it there so things don't make noises when you're driving around. You see that was the edge between the parts that you need to remove. And these are three Torx 20 T20 screws. And this is part of the trim of the car, it's not the actual glove box. And you need a T20 screwdriver. They're pretty common to find anyway, these ones. This is under the dashboard, so it's a bit inconvenient. You can look under the car and afterwards you can sit on the passenger seat. This is on the passenger side. And while you're sitting, you can feel the screws with your fingers and uh, just remove them with the screwdriver. This is how the Torx screw looks like. I'm using a better screwdriver here. It's really important to have a good tool, good screwdrivers, so that you don't uh, put more effort than you need to anyway. Removing the last screw of the trim here. And then you lift it a little bit and it comes out. There's more screws. You're not done with the removing of screws here. Three more screws under the glove box. I point them out to you here so you know where they should be. Three screws there. There are no other screws that you need to think about, worry about. So after removing the trim, Depending if someone opened the car, this uh, glove box before, there might be some screw missing, but there should be three screws. This view is from the, the bottom of the car, from the feet area, showing towards the top of the car. This is under the dashboard here. You see, I'm, I don't really, I don't really see them, but you can feel the screws where they are and with the screwdriver you can easily find them and remove them. This is, I find, the easiest way to remove these screws without having to go under the car. Three more screws to add and there is more. And this screw here, it's a longer screw so make sure that you keep this separate. Basically they're all the same size, T20. Except for this one. Here I use a flexible uh, screwdriver arm. But you can use a ratchet tool. That's what, that would be actually much better. Uh, a key that would is uh, horizontal when you move it. So tubular, tubular key with a Torx, Torx screwdriver set. That would be very helpful. I didn't find I didn't find it with me. I didn't. Uh, I just had this screwdriver and it's not really the screwdriver for this, but it worked eventually. This is the part number for the catch. This is the, the part of the lock mechanism. And you have the middle screw and two more screws on the sides. And also these have to be removed. You remove the screws counterclockwise. They are all removing, they are all being removed counterclockwise and tightened clockwise. And one another one comes out and the last one in the corner here. After removing this last screw, now it's uh, the glove box can come out. It's, uh, it's ready to be pulled out from the dashboard. Here, 
the reason why I did this was to fix the motor of the flap for the recirculation air. So I didn't have to replace the glove box at all, but if you want to replace the glove box, this is how you take the old one out. It actually helps if you leave the, the glove box open when you pull it out. You see it goes a bit downwards and this is how you can get get it out from the dashboard in there. All right, now it's it's all removed from there. And you see this is the mechanism that makes it move smoothly so it doesn't just fall out. It's uh, it's coming out slowly. This is the part number of the glove box 6Q285701 and this is the option D. I guess they, they might be compatible within each other. This There could be a light there, but not in this car, that's just a piece of plastic. Different cars come with different options, so these are the options for this car. Behind the, the glove box there is this uh, a bit like a insulation mat and most important here, this yellow area, that's the airbag, the passenger airbag. And you don't want to mess with that, you don't want to touch it. Don't don't consider it a thin glass. So if you touch it, you could break it. The reason why I'm saying this is that it might trigger the airbag by mistake. You never know and you don't want to risk doing that. That's the electrical connector and the air canister. You really don't want to touch those. If you touch it with your finger a little bit, okay, it's not a big deal, but don't... Uh, use tools around it or pull it or anything. Best thing I found is to secure this mat right there so it hides the airbag parts. So if I'm doing anything on the fan there, any screwdriver, there is no chance really to uh, hit the airbag connector or anything. This is, I replaced this a long time ago. Still works pretty well. This is the AC fan. The heater blower motor and that's the the v154 the motor for the recirculator flap once you finished with what you had to do you put back this uh, cover this blanket and if you are installing a new glove box you install now the new one just like that so if you just replace the glove box you don't need to do anything with the that uh, insulation blanket from behind the glove box. When you put the glove box back in, I found that it's very important to keep it open. The tray has to be open so it's easier to go inside. And also this edge of below there should go further because you have to remember how it looked like when you took it out. It has a tendency to to catch before that so it's difficult to put it back in. No need to force it. You really don't need to force it. Everything should just you wiggle it a little bit and that's all. Here there was a small problem in the new glove box. In the old glove box. There was this metal clip for the screw, for the middle screw and it just fell on the floor. It was right there. Uh, it's good I found it. Uh, if the screw doesn't go in if it doesn't tighten and it keeps being loose, it's probably one of these clips that fell out, so watch out under the glove box. That's a tip. It just happened while I was doing this. After reinstalling the this uh, clip, the clip is actually in the dashboard of the car, it's not on the glove box. So I first I installed the middle middle screw. If you had uh, any problem with the clip falling out, I believe you should install that one first to make sure it's okay. You can also loosen it a little bit. So it can, it might be difficult to put it back, but if you loosen it, it will go fine. But then it might be too loose. So you have to be careful with that. When you tighten it, it will be fine. 
So I'm tightening now all these screws, the middle, the left and the right. And pretty good here. The glove box is installed now. And now I have to tighten the screws below also. These screws are securing the glove box to the dashboard. Three screws, it's all done in reverse order really now. And you have to be careful not to over tighten them. You make them snug but not too tight. It's best to use a hand screwdriver like this so you can't over tighten. Then installing the tray, it snaps back in place like that. Three more screws. And these are the last screws, I promise. Okay, so it might be difficult. Some of them, you might not be able to find them. If you have to, you can look under the car to find the screws. And this is the last one, going in the corner right here. What I did here, the first screw I installed, I didn't tighten all the way, so it has a bit of room to move around a bit. And now I tighten the middle one and the, the one on the left. So now they are all tight. All I have to do now is to reinstall that uh, tray, that rubber tray, and it's done. Here, if you don't tighten this too well, you might hear some noises when you drive, so you can tighten it a little bit more if you hear any noises, or put a bit of WD-40 between the plastics so they don't uh, make uh, noises while you drive. You check the latch mechanism works perfectly, as it should. And that's all really, you could wipe it. I cleaned it afterwards, after from fingerprints and everything. Thanks for watching.